This is going to be Bible references on the cup of God's wrath. It seems that a people or nation or individual has a cup. And the more people sin, the closer the cup gets to becoming full. Genesis 15, 16 says, But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Imagine what the cup of America looks like, possibly running over the sides. And people in this country are blaspheming and sinning at such a high rate, it's like it's pouring a soft drink into a glass too quickly. You know how it fizzes out over the top and goes all over the table. America is filling their cup if it isn't already full. Look at verses like Revelation 18.6. It says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So you can see that the Bible talks about a cup, and a cup getting full because of iniquity. And Jeremiah 51 5 says, For Israel hath been hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Just like America is filled with sin, a nation can be filled with sin, and they are filling the cup of the Lord's wrath. And it's not just America, it's people in general. They're filling their cup. Romans 11.25 says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Notice the word fullness. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. It's a full cup. The cup gets full of the wrath of God. Revelation 15, 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. The cup gets full, and then God will make the people drink it. Look at Isaiah 51, 17, Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which hast drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling, and wrung them out. Isaiah 51, 22, Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people, Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. And then Jeremiah 25, 15 through 17, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at mine hand. And cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me. So you see there's a cup. The cup gets full. And then God makes the people drink the wrath of God out of the cup. Sinners love to get drunk and they will get drunk on the wine of the wrath of God. Revelation 14.10 says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Lamentations 4.21 says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Habakkuk 2.15 shows us that a man wants another person to get drunk so that he can see his nakedness. So anyone who gets drunk on the Lord's wrath will make themselves naked and show their shame, as it said in Lamentations 4.21, and shalt make thyself naked. Many people treat Jesus as their excuse to drink alcohol. They claim Jesus drank alcoholic wine. They say, Jesus drank wine so I can drink wine. They basically pretend Jesus is pouring them the glass of wine. That's how much they believe he is in favor of them drinking it. And people want to drink, so God gives them the cup. Revelation 16:19 And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. 
Psalm 75, 8, For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he poureth it out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. You know that God is a consuming fire, and that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And f you should fear not them which kill the body, and are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You don't want to drink the cup. Job 21, 20 says, His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Jesus Christ had to drink the cup of the wrath of God. He did this to pay for the sins of mankind. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, God poured out his wrath on Jesus Christ for every sin that man has committed. And this cup is what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 26, 39. It says in Matthew 26, 39, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. John 18, 11, Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my Father hath given me. Shall I not drink it? Jesus Christ bare our sins on the cross and became sin for us on the cross. Second Corinthians 5.21 says. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. First Peter 2.24. Who is on self by our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins. Should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. God's wrath on the sins of mankind. That were placed on Jesus Christ. They temporarily broke fellowship of the Son and the Father. Matthew twenty seven forty six says in about the ninth hour, Jesus Christ Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus wasn't trying to get out of the crucifixion or worried about the pain and agony. He wanted to go to the cross and he did it voluntarily. Colossians 2.15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he may have showed, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, he was taunting the devil and devils. He spoiled principalities and powers, and he triumphed over them. Hebrews 12.2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy of that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus wanted to go to the cross and die for the sins of mankind. Isaiah 53 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, but the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus willingly gave his body as a perfect sacrifice and payment for sin. He taunted the devil by going to the cross and made a show of it. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. A spiritual battle was taking place when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Jesus Christ once again manhandled the serpent. Isaiah 50 and verse 5 says, The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. If you don't want to drink the cup of God's wrath, then you need to accept the payment for sin. The only payment for sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. He took the cup of God's wrath for you so that you wouldn't have to drink it. If you don't have Jesus Christ's blood applied to your account, then you presently have the wrath of God on you. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You need to believe the Lord Jesus Christ to get the wrath of God off of your back. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you 
the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. The gospel of Jesus Christ is this. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He died for you because you're a sinner. He was buried and he rose again the third day. If you want to be saved, believe that and put your trust in that to get you to heaven. And quit relying on your own self-righteous works because you can't do anything good enough to get yourself to heaven. You could live a perfect life and have one sin. And that one sin just kills everything and will keep you from being at peace with God. The only way to get at peace with God is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God will give you His righteousness.